Hello and welcome to Startup Street. I'm Shruti Mishra and with me are Arundhati Ramanan and Ritu Singh. These are the top headlines from the startup space. D2C Unicorn Good Glam Group asserts that it is in compliance with its contractual obligations and payouts to promoters. Amid Media reporter reports that an investor in women's hygiene brand Sirona has sent a notice of default to the company's board. Baiju's clears part of salary dues for March ahead of NCLT hearing. As per a PTI report, founder and CEO Baiju Ravindran raised debt in his personal capacity to pay the salaries of employees. Baiju's salary expenses for partial payouts is estimated to be in the range of 25 to 30 crore rupees. Zomato hikes platform fee to 5 rupees. This is the second hike since the flat charge was introduced on all food deliveries in August 2023 to boost profitability. In another move, the listed hyperlocal delivery giant has paused intercity deliveries. Senior level exit at Peak 15 Partners. Strategic development lead Piyush Gupta is poised to leave the venture capital firm. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that Gupta will soon unveil a new venture fund focused on secondary transactions. E-commerce giant Flipkart's venture capital arm invites applications for the third cohort of Flipkart Leap Ahead focuses on startups leveraging Gen AI in core solutions. The program aims to offer two-month mentorship and funding of $200,000 to $500,000. Acacia, a decarbonization platform for real estate and infrastructure sectors, raises $6.5 million in pre-series A funding led by Illuminate Financial with participation from Southeast Asia-based AC Ventures and early backers Axel and B Capital. Tesla CEO Elon Musk postpones his India visit, citing heavy obligations as the EV company. Uh, the announcements follows the EV maker's decision to lay off 10% of its staff globally and price cuts in the US, China and Germany as it grapples with slumping sales. Those were the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening, but on what's brewing today, Former OYO and Un Academy senior executive Vivek Sinha announced the launch of his new venture Beyond Odds Technologies with a $11 million seed funding. The round was led by Matrix Partners India and Lightspeed. The round was also a mix of equity and debt. Beyond Odds is a platform that recruits, trains, certifies and deploys candidates for grey-collar jobs in industries like healthcare, education, construction and hospitality. Joining us now to discuss the growth roadmap is Vivek Sinha, the founder and CEO of Beyond Odds Technologies. Uh, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us on Startup Street and congratulations on starting this new venture of yours. Now, uh, with the seed round, you've announced the launch of your venture Beyond Odds Technologies. You aim to establish a platform that focuses on grey-collar work, training, certification and recruitment. So, uh, elaborate on your plan, so Beyond Odds Technologies, especially as you enter a very crowded market. Yeah, so first of all, thank you for having me on your channel. Uh, so, uh, like you said, we are focusing on four specific sectors and we are starting with healthcare in the first uh, academic season uh, because there is a massive uh, shortage of skilled workforce in the healthcare sector, not just in India, but globally as well. And yes, while the sector has a lot of player, existing players, but the sector remains largely unorganized. And uh, today, uh, India is seen as a as a talent destination. India is, is seen as a destination for wage arbitrage in this sector. It is not seen as a destination for high quality talent or uh, let's say excellence. So that is what we are trying to change through this platform. Uh, and I think there is a lot of scope for an organized player to come and deliver value through training excellence. And that is what we are trying to achieve. Once we have cracked the model in healthcare this year, uh, we will gradually uh, deploy capital in other other sectors as well. Right, so you're first looking at the healthcare area. So um, talk to us about the other sectors you're aiming to service as well, apart from healthcare, and what kind of programs will you have on offer? Will you look beyond these sectors as well going forward? So uh, there are two filters. Uh, uh, A, we want to focus on grey collar. We don't want to do the super aspirational job, and we don't want to focus on blue collar job either. Uh, because in blue collar jobs, uh, Monetization is a bit difficult in blue collar job. Plus, the component of uh, training is uh, very thin when you talk about blue collar jobs. And like I said, the whole company is built on the premise of delivering training excellence and hence delivering value for the employer and the candidate. 
So that's why you want to remain focused on blue collar, uh, gray collar jobs. So these are jobs which require intensive training. These are jobs which requires a certain certification and let's say two or three years, years of training with a degree or a diploma. In terms of our sector focus, I think these four sectors that we talk about, healthcare, construction, education, and hospitality, these are fairly large sectors. Plus there's a lot of investment that is uh, going to come in these sectors. If you if we are a believer of the, let's say, the India growth story, if we are a believer of the fact that India is going to grow at 7-8% uh, GDP in the coming decades, then most of that growth is coming from the services sector and core industries. And hence, if we want to continue our focus on these sectors. The third lens is that globally as well, there is a very reasonable demand for uh, talent uh, across these sectors from India. Right. So, and if we are able to cater to a, let's say, chunk of that demand, there is a clear wage arbitrage. We, we can offer actually much better life to our, our candidates by helping them not just crack, crack jobs in India, but also matching their skill set with the demand globally. Right. So we'd like to keep our focus in these segments. So global aspirations as well there. But, you know, you've raised $11 million. What's on top of the agenda? How will you spend that money if you could quickly tell us? So, uh, uh, so most of the time, focus and investment in the last six months uh, has gotten into building a very, very high quality content. Uh, initially, uh, we we actually ran a global search to find out who the best people are in the healthcare sector. And we ended up onboarding people who have done very, very good work in, in the European countries in GCC because we wanted to bring that, uh, wanted to bring that uh, global best standards into the training aspect in India. So that's uh, so content development is one piece where a right. lot of investment and effort has gone. The other piece has gone in terms of cracking uh, partnerships with uh, employers. Uh, we we are a very very employer uh, uh, first approach. We don't look at our business as just training and education, which can give us fee. But we first go to an employer, crack a deal, and then right. basic those commitments we uh, uh, install capacity. Third, we are also we are we are also going live with seven centers. Uh, which has simulation labs, which has equipment labs. So some investment has gone over there. So in the last six months, this is what we have focused on. Of course, in the coming months, uh, one other area where a lot of investment will go in, in brand building and in acquisition. So these are the four uh, major focus areas for us. Right. So acquisitions also on top of the radar there. But, you know, if you could quickly tell us, um, you've launched Mversity. You, you just said you're going to launch seven centers. What's the aim of this vertical? How will it work? And, uh, you know, where will the first uh, uh, centre be? If you could quickly tell us in 30 seconds. So we were, we just went live yesterday uh, with the first centre in Bangalore. Uh, we are launching six more in the next 30 days. Uh, another one in Bangalore, one in Hyderabad, one in Nagpur, one in Ranchi, one in Delhi NCR and one in Kerala. So University is a higher education uh, uh, platform. It offers degrees and certification. The degrees are integrated with a university degree. So the premise is that a student after 12th can get skill development along with the degree itself. So uh, for that, we have worked with universities. Apart from the three-year uh, bachelor's degree, we also offer six to nine months certifications. These are co-branded certifications with the employer partner. Uh, uh, both the courses are actually very, very closely created with the industry partners themselves. And there is a back-to-back -back agreement with the industry partner to absorb the candidates coming out of these courses. All right. Uh, all right, uh, Vivek, uh, thank you so much for taking time out and being here on Startup Street. We wish you all the best with your new venture going forward and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, moving from one fundraise to the other, artificial intelligence cloud, cloud and platform as a service startup, Nisa has secured $20 million in its seed funding round led by Matrix Partners India, Nexus Venture Partners and NTT VC. The funding will help drive the generative AI cloud platform as a service and observability for India and global markets. To understand how Nisa is helping companies transition to AI native cloud computing, joining me now is its founder and CEO, Sharad Sang. Sharad, welcome to Startup Street. You call yourselves India's first AI cloud, uh, you know, and platform as a service startup. So first tell me how you're helping enterprises harness the power of Gen AI and thereby helping them gain a competitive edge. First of all, thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, it's important to understand that NASA's core philosophy is to offer our clients a seamless path to harness the power of Gen AI, which is often very daunting to implement and operate. Yeah. So our full stack core AI cloud platform will enable our clients to be able to build, 
and deploy state-of-the-art AI models with ease. By simplifying this entire workflow, we are empowering our clients uh, to be able to take their Gen AI projects to production faster. This will enable higher accuracy, efficiency, and lower costs. And we're also doing this in a secure manner. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Sharad, basically, you're essentially democratizing AI, but if you could tell us, how soon do you plan to release your services in the market? Yeah, we're currently running uh, betas with multiple clients mm -hmm. in different verticals. We expect general availability that is ready for mass adoption by July 1st. Okay. Uh, and we're uh, and we are doing. We are trying to, uh, you know, come up with multiple use cases. So we've got uh, lighthouse clients in each vertical currently that we are working with. Sure. Also, tell us what kind of cost efficiency do your offerings bring in, and how are you securing your clients' AI landscape in the cloud? So the cost efficiencies are significant compared to what we are currently seeing in the market. Uh, in some cases, over forty to fifty percent. But when you combine the uh, quant quality, uh, quantitative aspect of this cost efficiency with the ease of being able to deploy and the, and the uh, ability to deploy this fast, almost 3x uh, faster to production, the actual ROI we believe will be far greater. Uh, and uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, we're rolling out our Aegis platform, which is our security platform, which has been purpose built to safeguard against emerging AI ML uh, threats. Uh, this is, you know, including model poisoning and okay. also, um, you know, data poisoning. So in addition to the securing uh, infrastructure in general, we are also adding the AI component, AI security component as well. Okay. Sharad, let's talk about the seed funding that you've raised. How do you plan to utilize the fresh funds? What are the offerings you're working on currently? So our uh, initial uh, seed round is predominantly being used for, um, uh, you know, expanding our engineering and development resources. We also have to deploy uh, cloud platform infrastructure, and we're also going to use this for our GTM. The platforms we are building include the end-to-end -end AI cloud platform, but we're also building our Aegis platform, which is a security platform, and our uh, Palvera platform, which is a network observability and remediation platform. Okay. Sharad, if you could take me through the reach of NASA, how many clients have you onboarded till date, the partnerships built globally, and your team size as well? Yeah, great. As I mentioned, we're working with uh, several clients across multiple verticals, over 25 of them. Okay. Uh, we're currently in beta. The, the aim is to also co-create industry-specific use cases. Uh, and the platform, will, as I said, will be available for general release in early July. Yes. We, uh, and we've um, established partnerships both on the technology front with companies like NVIDIA, but also on the go-to-market front globally. And um, yeah. So and, uh, it will help us accelerate our market pipelines post general release. Okay, and Sharad, what is the revenue model? How do you plan to sustain yourself and then gradually turn profitable? So our revenue model is subscription or consumption based, and okay. we'll be we'll be uh, offering multiple deployment uh, scenarios uh, models. So, for example, there could be consumption through a public cloud, you know, where mm. we we'll offer, uh, for example, fractional GPUs, but also on-prem. Uh, deployments for large enterprises for whom security is a concern. Okay. And we expect to be profitable in the second year of our operation. All right. That, that's quick, Sharad. One final question before I let you go. The meteoric rise of uh, demand for artificial intelligence globally calls for AI native cloud platform and NISA is all set to offer that. Uh, but you know, take us through the future growth and revenue targets considering the immense potential the sector offers. Of course, profitability uh, in the second year of operations, but what else? Yeah, so, um, you know, basically, if you look at the verticals that, uh, in the space that we are in, the AI infrastructure as a service market is growing at a 32% CAGR. The AI platform as a service market is growing at 21% CAGR worldwide. The network observability and remediation space is growing at 27% CAGR. And the AI security industry is growing at a 34.58% CAGR. This is based on industry data. Right, and we believe that in India it will grow even faster because the base is smaller. Yeah. Uh, as a private company in the stage stage, we're not permitted to disclose revenue targets, but uh, all I can say is it's a very, very healthy uh, industry, and it's sure. the right time to delve into this space. Yeah. Absolutely, Sharad. Many thanks for joining us on Startup Street today, and wish you the very best for all your growth plans. Thank you so much.
On that note, it is time for us to head into a short break. Innovation-led sports company Agilita Sports has acquired a 40-year license to manufacture and distribute Lotto Sport Italia's products in India. What does this partnership entail? How will it benefit both companies? We tell you all of this and more on the other side. Stay tuned. Well, sportswear and at leisure solutions platform Agilita Sports has announced the brand licensing partnership between Agilita Sports and WHP Global for Lotto Sport Italia. This collaboration marks the commencement of a 40 year license for Lotto to penetrate markets in India, Southeast Asia, and Australia. And through this partnership, Agilitas is going to help them manufacture, design with their R&D, supply chain, marketing, and distribution in the near future. So joining me now for more on the significance of this partnership is Abhishek Ganguly, the founder of Agilita Sports. Abhishek, thanks very much for your time here on CNBC TV 18. Start by telling us about this partnership with WHP Global. Uh, you don't have your website yet, but you've got your first show, your first partnership. It's a 40-year license. What is it going to entail? Well, actually, it is not our first uh, acquisition also. We had acquired India's largest sports footwear manufacturer, um, Mochiko. Uh, so this is our second. This is on the B2C side, our first acquisition. So this is a 40-year license that we have signed with uh, Lotto, the brand, um, in terms of uh, manufacturing, designing, uh, distribution and retail end-to-end -end license exclusively for India, um, South Asia, uh, Australia, and South Africa. Would you be able to share the financial aspects of this deal, what it means for Agilitas? Well, for us, um, you know, looking at the opportunity of creating a brand which over-indexes on giving more value to the consumer for the price uh, to the consumer, is a large opportunity in India. Um, providing great products at a right price in India uh, really works, given spe specifically that sportswear is going to grow 4x in the next eight to 10 years. The size of the price is really growing, and hence there is a lot of white space in the market. So overall, we see that there is a large business possibility without holding it to a certain number of years, but building a lotto brand to a 2000 crore uh, business just in India in the medium term is a definite possibility. Okay, so with Mochiko earlier and now this partnership for Lotto, what sort of sales and revenues are you hoping to bring in for Agilitas in the next few years? Any targets you can share? We have a clear view that we have a definite possibility to build a billion dollar business uh, again, uh, not specifically uh, timing that at this stage, uh, given the stage of the business that we are in. Uh, let's face it that we have just, uh, it's, it's still our first year of operations. Uh, 
uh, but but in the you know in the in the horizon a billion dollar business from from india's um, the sportswear company uh, and hopefully india's largest sports company in future uh, is a definite possibility okay abhishek so when you say end to end manufacturing to retail uh, you've already got the manufacturer with bochico you've got the license brand with lotto what next what is the longer term plan for agilitas in the market so dominated by a handful of players well um uh, we have the b2b business which is the contract manufacturing business that it in itself will grow substantially uh, because most of the brands playing in india have realized that they need to have the supply chain within the country and and the government also is promoting that so that will grow on the consumer side we we would like to launch not one but three to four brands uh, in fact we have almost lined up our second brand all these brands will be complementing with definitive distinct positioning and consumer offering so you can definitely expect more brands coming into our roster we will not be digressed in terms of the category that we are playing in we will be a sportswear and lifestyle play uh, we will not sign brands which are really uh, competing with each other but brands which are complementing and hence giving us an access to at least or you know 100 million uh, addressable market in india so you've already raised about 530 crores so far how much of a runway does this give you with all of these plans uh, will you require more funds for growth in the next few years well um, we're not in a cash dilutive um, you know business which which guzzles cash so we definitely will not need capital every year we have enough Uh, for our current plans for the next um, next couple of years at least for a substantial capital raise all right moving on in news just in paytm founder vijay shekhar sharma says merchant migration complete with yes bank running the systems at the back end says core payments business will get amplified thanks to partnerships with multiple banks and welcomes the offline payment aggregator draft rules proposed by rbi listen in so the the migration is completed uh, the system is running on yes bank backend and as far as the work is concerned yes bank can decide whom they want to do what they want to get a additional verification done this is up to yes bank to take a call on now that because of payment partnership we are able to work deeper with many other financial institutions and banks etc which means that there will be more services that we can distribute versus let's say our while we were able to distribute so the business model gets amplified and in partnership with more banks it becomes even more scalable and enriched with more revenue opportunities for us and when it comes to the offline pa i think the good thing that uh, regulator has approached towards it is that standardization of onboarding of merchants because that is something that different different payment aggregator or otherwise let's say qr companies had a process which was their own understanding of the process versus right now it will become standardized Today is celebrated around the world annually as World Earth Day. So on this day, we decided to put the spotlight on India's environment tech startups and investors focus on the same. According to a report by Traction, Indian environment tech startups have raised nearly $240 million in funding in the first three months of 2024. Early stage startups raised $186 million in capital in the first quarter of this year, while seed stage startups clocked $51.4 million. The report pointed out that the first quarter of this year only saw two late growth stage funding deals. EV startup River backed $40 million in a Series B funding round, while Blue Smart got $25 million in a mix of equity and debt early in the year. However, India's environmental technology funding saw substantial growth between 2018 and 2022, surging from $230 million to a whopping $2.47 billion. That's right, Arundhati. Uh, but sample this: Environment Tech funding in India peaked in 2022 at 2.47 billion dollars, but experienced a decline to 1.68 billion dollars in 2023, a 32 percent decrease from 2022. When it comes to cities, Bengaluru topped the list in the space of terms in terms of all-time city-wise funding at 2.7 billion dollars, followed by Delhi at 1.2 billion dollars and Mumbai at 942 million dollars. When we look 
look at the most active investors in the seed stage, Plume Ventures tops the chart, followed by 100x.vc, Sangam Ventures, Good Capital, Sunicon Ventures, among others. Early stage rounds were led by Tiger Global, Sequoia Capital and Peak 15 Partners. Now, according to the report, the environment tech space has seen 14 IPOs and 25 acquisitions till date. Only five companies reported $100 million plus rounds in 2023 and the space saw only $1 billion startup emerge so far that is Ola Electric. But despite the global increase in funding, India's share has remained consistently low, ranging from 0 to 7%. India's share in global funding was 7% in 2022, the highest since 2011. On that note, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Startup Street from Shruti and me. Goodbye and many thanks for watching. More news and updates continue on the other side.